Like Back on Inside Tennessee, Bosch and Williams talking during the break. As always, that's the more interesting part of the discussion sometimes. <laughs> we <laughs> Good gotta to have, have. we got to have the greatest outtake show sometimes. <laughs> yeah. so. it, that would make headlines. So that yeah. transitions us into this moment, and I'm going to do a little word association game with you. Again, we're talking national politics and your reaction to what's in the headlines. And I'm just going to say one word, and you tell me what's on your mind right now because of it. Susan, we'll start with you, and that is the economy. Well, I think uh, Don will have a whole different view than what I have on the economy. The inflation is the worst it's been in, what, 40, 50 years. Um, gas prices have come down a little bit, and I'm thankful for that. I hope they come down a lot more within the next few months. Um, but, you know, the it's still a very difficult economy right now. Um, Job placement sounds good when they put out these national numbers, but everyone I know with a business in Tennessee is looking for workers. Um, service has changed because they don't have enough workers. So I'm perplexed about why the national economy, they say it's good and the jobs numbers are good, and yet we still have local businesses that can't find help. Um, so, yes, I am concerned about it. I think inflation is very difficult. I think we are in probably a, a recession now. It may get worse. Um, I hope not because um, I, think, I think we're all ready to see normal times again. But the Biden administration with this Inflation Reduction Act they just passed, which is to me a joke. I mean, clearly somebody sat around the room and said, what would we call this bill? It's about climate change and health care, but let's call it the Inflation Reduction Act, which clearly the Penn Wharton School says it isn't going to reduce inflation, but it had a good sound. So, yeah, I'm concerned about the economy. I hope it turns around soon. Don, when I say the economy, you think what? Um, I think it's an incredibly complex situation, and much of the things that Susan said at the beginning I can't quarrel with um, there's a reason that employers can't find employees, and that's because we're at near flat zero employment needs, 3.5%, the lowest it's ever been. Wages have gone up. What happens when people are paid more money? People raise their prices. It drives inflation. For every action, there's a reaction, and it's an incredibly difficult thing to balance. Susan pointed out that the gasoline prices are going down. They're going down dramatically after being at all-time highs. They were there largely because of the difficulties in, in Europe and Ukraine and Russia. And what happened? President Biden had the foresight to release strategic oil reserves within the United States, and all of a sudden gas prices are dropping. Now, I don't believe the president has a lot of control over gasoline prices, but that was an instance where good thoughts, good actions yielded something that helped consumers. This is a difficult problem. Um, we, we have had record inflation. I think things are starting to stabilize. We've also had supply side problems and the ports backing up. And when things backed up after COVID uh, unlocked, so to speak, uh, with China being locked out, this is an incredibly complicated problem. And, and we really do have solid leadership trying to work through it, but it's not something that can be fixed overnight. I would suggest that some of the things, things operate on a macro scale and economy certainly are that. What President Biden has done in the last two years, really, it takes three, four, five years sometimes to turn the ever large and ever so ship around to to get it going where it's going. I think we're going to be OK, but it's tough. You're right. Workers, are, it's hard to find workers, but you've got to pay them more right now. I'm certainly in that situation as a small business owner. The economy is booming for employment, and it, but it's, it's tough with the prices of goods right now. You mentioned the president. We'll talk about uh, politicians in a moment, but let's stick to our issues for now. And Don, let's turn to the abortion <laughs> issue. When I say abortion, what's on your mind? Um, two things. It's a travesty for women. And this is this is a travesty. This is erasing 50 years uh, of women's choice and women's rights in a way that we haven't seen in so very long in our country. I also use the word opportunity. Um, but there's no question the Democrats were in a hole. There's no question that uh, eight weeks ago, President Biden's numbers were at an all-time low, uh, that, the, that the Democrats' hopes 
uh, even maybe the recaps of the Senate were, were much lower. Things have turned around dramatically, largely on this one issue. And if there's something that's mobilized Democrats, mobilized a lot of Republican women, and I think Susan might choose to speak to it or not, um, but I've heard a lot of Republican women come up to me and go, whoa, that's too far from my party and I can't support that. And um, I, I think it's the thing that will energize the left and energizes the vote. We've talked about this even locally having some effect, uh, but I think nationally we're gonna see it even more. So it's a travesty and an opportunity maybe to get some things long-term right before they get even worse. Susan, as we move to you, even before the Supreme Court decision, you said on this broadcast that depending on that decision, it could hurt Republicans and do exactly what Don is saying, galvanizing not just Democrats, but maybe some moderate Republicans who feel like the court went too far on this issue. You said that early on. Do you think what you said is coming true? Well, we probably won't know until November, if even then, but I am concerned about it. The, the voter, the woman voter from age 18 to say 40, it's not, it's not a group, a demographic group that turns out in great numbers normally. Um, it, we've seen, you know, we've been through soccer moms and all of that, and occasionally there'll be an issue that will galvanize them and turn them out. This could very well do that. You know, I think if people would realize that what the Supreme Court said was the decision should be left to the state. And in Tennessee, of course, we've passed many, many abortion bills here. And um, I think we're, we're in the sort of the, in the South, uh, most of the states have passed very, very uh, stringent bills that make it difficult, if not impossible, to have an abortion in their state. Other states, will probably keep uh, make uh, allow abortions to happen with some maybe with some caveats um but the political piece of it i you know this past election um that we just went through in in knox county uh, there was a little bit of surprise to me on the numbers um the mayor for instance got 55 percent of the vote um, some of the county office holders got 56, seven right in there. And in times past, we've seen 65, 66, 67. So who were those voters? Was it women who were upset about this abortion issue? Or just did the, Dem did the Democrats just get their voters out? The Republicans didn't see a burning issue to go vote. So they stayed home. Uh, that worries me again. That worries me for November. Yeah. But, um, the abortion issue is one that's very difficult. It's very personal. Um, I'm pro-life. I actually believe that life begins at conception, but I do think you should have some exceptions, for, certainly for the life of the mother, maybe for rape and incest. Um, and that's something that's gonna have to be discussed at the state level going forward. We'll see what happens in Tennessee, but we have a fairly stringent abortion law now in Tennessee. We've got to take we have a quick... one of the strictest, to be honest, because we have none of those exceptions, and it is, it is a perilous time for women in this state. We've got to take a quick break. Is that break. the life of the mother? Are you sure it's not the life of the mother? No, the it is not there, Susan. Look at the statute. We've got to take a quick break. As we go to break, Susan was talking about the uh, turnout in the local election. Uh, Republicans off in Knox County, but so were Democrats down something like 7% according to the Compass's uh, numbers. Republicans off 40% in this election when you compare it to years past. A little perspective, we're back with more issues and politicians on Inside Tennessee.